Hi, this is Bird Sargas with another edition of Inside OSU, and as you can see, I'm inside one of the many workshops of our design and manufacturing laboratory of our premier mechanical and aerospace engineering program. Uh, this is where the students build their designs and really learn the nuts and bolts of mechanical engineering, so to speak. And with us here is the faculty member that runs this whole thing, and his name is Ron Delahousy. Ron? Thank you for having us out. Certainly, good to see you. This is fantastic. What, uh, tell us about the mechanical engineering program. Okay, well, you may have heard that OSU is a school called an A&M type school. We are the yeah. M. You're the M. <laughs> we okay. are the mechanical. We teach yeah. mechanical and aerospace engineering here. We teach students to design, manage, build, operate, but primarily design devices like aircraft, cars, I see. Uh, almost anything. We what, just, are, what are some of the specialties people go into from, from this uh, school? Well, certainly aerospace, the outside of the airplane, the flight control system, what it looks like and how that interacts with the air, that would be a specialty. We have people who specialize in the structure of aircrafts, cars. Uh, we have people going to the petroleum industry uh, related to drilling things, related to maintaining equipment. They really could go just about everywhere. The economy's been tough. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's affected uh, the job market really across the board. Mm -hmm. what's, been the, uh, what's been the effect here in, the, in the, these areas? Well, it has had some effect and it is tougher than usual. Our students are getting jobs, uh, many are, some are not. Uh, but the nice thing about mechanical is we are so broad in general, everybody's looking for mechanical engineers. By the way, these stylish, uh, the stylish eyewear that we have on, actually Ron's is quite a bit more stylish than mine. <laughs> just, mine just came out of the sack over here, uh, is to protect your eyes from, because you have right. a lot of very uh, advanced and complicated machines around here. And very high powered machines that could reach out and hurt you. So we pay a lot of attention to safety here. Well, let's go back and I see some students back there working. Let's go have a look. Okay, great. How you doing? Pretty good, how are you? Well, that looks pretty complicated. I do what I can. Hi, Burns Hargis. Justin Otto. Hi, Justin. Nice to meet you. Uh, actually, I already knew that. Uh, Justin is a senior from Enid, right? Yes, sir. And what's your exact major? I am mechanical engineering. Just exactly what we need to find here. What, uh, what are you working on here? Uh, right now, what I'm doing, I need to uh, put a keyway in this part I've been working on. Uh, this is a milling machine. Basically, what it does, it works on all kinds of flat sides. Uh, you can drill holes, mill notches, do all kinds of things like that. Just kind of show us what's going on here. <clears throat> well, basically what I have right here is just a, a piece of flat bar stock. What I'm doing is turn it on. This is an end mill inside here. Uh, we're milling a notch inside the part, kind of like this I hope one. you all understand what he's talking about because I'm lost. It's kind of one like right here. Oh, uh, okay. That all was right. just a regular square block. We milled a notch through it and drilled a hole in it with this particular all right. machine. I see. So do, do it. Show, okay. me, show me how it works. Are you ready? Yeah. It's pretty exciting. Now, how do, you, how do you know how far down to bring it? You go down until it touches right on the you, top. You just don't eyeball it, do you? No. And then right here, yeah. the, all these are thousandths, point zero zero one of an inch. And then with that, it allows you to set your depth. And so you've got really, really close tolerances. Right. And this is coolant, which keeps the bit cool and the chips from sticking on the bit. I see. Huh. Make your pass. Wow. Shut her off. And here I thought a little, there was a little guy with a chisel that just worked on those things. Well, then we keep him in the back room. <laughs> That's great. Well, uh, tell us about the job market for somebody with your skills and, oh, and there's, degree. There's so many options. You go into the oil, natural gas industry. You can go automotive industry. Uh, anything that moves, you know, from chainsaws to elevators, mechanical engineers have their hands in all of it. So there's a lot of a lot of options, a lot of diversity in it. So how's your, just summing up, how's been your, what's your experience been here at the, at the Mechanical Engineering School? Couldn't be any better. Great. You feel like you're really getting a practical education. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, this building right here, I think, is probably one of the things that put OSU over the top of all other programs, all other colleges across America. That's right. That's great. Super. Well, Justin, thank you very much. Appreciate, Appreciate the little lesson here. This is a mill, not a lathe. Uh, lathes do round, right? Correct. Mills do straight. So that's that's terrific. Let's go. Uh, let's go see what else is going on. Well, here we are in another one of the workshops before a obviously august court of battle. 
uh, that is part of, uh, part of the education here at the Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering School. And with me is Wes Combs. Hi, Wes. Hi. Wes is a senior from Edmond, Oklahoma. And uh, all of these contraptions in this uh, court are going to be explained to us by Wes now. Well, What's going on here? Well, what we have here is a table set up, and this wall in the middle here has two billiard well, balls. Now, just before we get to that, what, what does this have to do? This doesn't look like my classroom. I mean, are, did you, do you get assigned some task here? What, how does... Well, we're presented with a problem statement that says, here's a problem, here's a situation, go and design something to fulfill this situation. Okay, I see. So you don't get any instructions on how to design it. We give, we're given guidelines, if you will, rules right. of which not to step outside You gotta stay of. within these boundaries exactly. to solve this problem. Correct. And describe the problem here. The situation is to win. And how do you win? You have to get the least number of balls on your side after a round's over. Round starts, it's 90 seconds, and we have this table here, and the object is to get the balls on the other team's side and keep them there, or get them on your side and then put them on the other team's side and keep so you them there. Design, you designed a, uh, a robot to do that, right? Yes. And this is your robot? Yes. Does it have a name? Um, we have kind of called it Underground Maybelline. Maybelline, <laughs> yes. okay. All right, tell us how Maybelline uh, assists in getting these balls over on the other side. Well, our machine starts out in reverse, and we just kind of reverse at the wall and knock the balls on the other side, and then. So I mean, would it go up like that, or how is it going to um, like that? You come at it like this and hit it with this right. sign-looking thing ahead, on the do back. Go ahead, do it. Yeah. Sure. Okay. And boom. It hits it like that. So that gets that out of there. That gets that out of there. All but right. if the other team's quicker than us, we're prepared and. We didn't think that the bowling ball was really going to be much of an issue for our machine, so we just designed it to be you able to... Once, once you got it on the other side, you're probably okay. Yeah, and as the contest turned out, it seemed that, it seemed like most teams weren't able to yeah, do much of the bowling ball. Yeah, 90 seconds, that would be pretty hard. To... Exactly. So yeah. we designed specifically to deal with the bowling, or the billiard balls. All right. Well, this is great. Uh, now, your machine is not... We've got, we've got some different machines here. Uh, and let's, uh, let's try it. Uh, over on this end is uh, Mark Nelson, who's a junior from Oklahoma City. And on this end is Taylor Mitchell, who's a junior from Stillwater. And uh, they have their own machines. Uh, Taylor, tell me what your machine's supposed to do. Okay. Ours is a little bit of a unique concept from what the other teams do. Sure is. It doesn't look like <laughs> anything he's got. It was the most complicated, and we did have some trouble getting it to work at first. But the idea is that instead of waiting for the balls to come on our side and then put them over on the other team's side, we fire these three cannons that are released by a little switch caused by when our robot drives forward. Then we have a ramp drive up to the wall. Hopefully at this point, all of the balls are on the other team's side. So the cannon shoots and hits this, hits H the hits balls? Hits each of the balls, yes. And knocks them on the yep. other side. Okay, and they're then, on Mark's side. Yep. Okay. After that, the ramp drives up to the wall, right by the bowling ball hole. So this guy goes, can I move forward. it? Forward, yeah, go ahead. Or you got, if yep. you got your remote, just... Yeah, yeah, it can go. All right, send it. All right, so okay, he goes forward. That drives up, hoping the bowling ball is not there yet. And then this little guy comes up behind him. Oh, yeah, it's got a little pal here. And All then, right. Now, hopefully, okay. like I said, the ball's on the other team's side. Uh -huh. So okay. we just want him to not come back on our side. All right, let's play like they are. All right. Knock those others. So off. here we go. Okay, he's trying. He's really working at it. Oh, 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 yep. oh. There we go. Oh. <laughs> So anyway, yeah, it's kind of it. supposed yeah. to go through here, right? Yeah, my line was... Okay. Now, we're on the other team's side, so yeah. it doesn't matter. We just keep them from so getting the balls. you're just getting in his way so he can't pick those balls up exactly. and shove them through. Stop now, them from... Mark, explain what your machine does. Sure. Uh, we're a very, very standard design. Mm, Two-wheel drive, front-end loader. Anything Where'd you can... get your idea about this? Um, we... We're trying to decide what we wanted in our robot. So and what you're saying we, is there a team? Oh, certainly. This would be impossible as an individual exercise and teams that tried that probably experienced a lot of pain. Yeah. Um, when we were coming up with ideas of how we wanted to play the game and how we wanted to respond to the other team, we decided to go with a one-fits-all philosophy of let's build something very usable on the front end and let's use it however we can come up with a way to use it. Okay. For example, in this game, if I were coming into contact with this robot, I would use my front end loader mm -hmm. to flip him over and immobilize him. 
something like that. <laughs> and uh, this is designed to work a little bit slowly with this, but very quickly with our billiard balls and to hover them over the side of this wall beyond the grasp of the other wall. Oh, so you just, then you drop it out here? No need. If we can suspend it over the wall. So it's wait. on his side? Mm-hmm. I didn't, never didn't ask you, does your robot have a, have a name? Technically it does. What the day of the contest, we found out we needed a name, so it ended up being the Flying Monkeys. The what? Flying Monkeys. Flying Monkeys. First thing that came to our minds. Okay, <laughs> how about yours, Mark? Uh, we didn't come up with a name. Well, I can tell it's Saturday. Our creativity is in our design. Yeah, well, it's, yeah, I, although, you, as you said, it was a standard design. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so. <laughs> what does that so, say? So, uh. Uh, the, uh, you know, it's, tell, tell us, seriously now folks, tell us what you learned from this. We've spent a lot of time in Engineering North 108 classroom studying thermodynamics, uh, dynamics, how these materials break, how they come together, and how they move. But what we hadn't done until Engineering 3033 is to put whatever scraps we have together and make something that is real, exists, and does something physical which yeah. is ultimately what we're going to want to do as engineers. That's right, what, what would you say? It teaches you problem solving abilities as things that you wouldn't normally have to accomplish and achieve on your, your everyday life is, oh, here's a situation, how do I fix this? Here we go, here it comes. Oh no, there goes the bowling ball, he's talking. Oh no, wait, what's gonna happen here? What's gonna happen? Oh, I love it, it's fantastic. Well, I think you can see <laughs> we're at a stalemate here. I think you can see why this is truly one of the premier mechanical and aerospace engineering schools. We want to thank Professor Ron Delahousse uh, and all the students here for the uh, wonderful tour of this great lab. And, uh, and I think I'm going to learn how to run one of these robots. See you next time on Inside OSU. Yep, this is your like a car. All right. Okay, let's, I want him going down, okay?